Hi everybody, it's Regulo7 with you, and this is me at my 50th birthday party, and it was really fantastic, and as you can see, there's my coffee, yay, alright, anyway, I was just watching this video about this girl, who was, um, eventually she committed suicide, and to me, mm, that, that hits a soft spot really does um i got thinking about something For number one i'm so glad that i can be able to celebrate my 50th birthday um now as you guys know i'm generally a pretty pretty okay person um you know i, I try to treat people with respect and um the respect that i think i would want that's how I treat people, like how we're supposed to do, right? And I was watching this video about this girl who was, um, who committed suicide. And I got thinking about when I had my breakdown and how I was just so hell-bent on wanting to kill myself. I mean, it's, now it's stupid, but I had my reasons. Um... I had an argument with some people, and they took it to another level. And the one guy, his name was Kurt, he's dead now, he was telling me, or a friend of his who was close to him, and she's also unfortunately passed away, that she found out who called on me. This chick named Tiffany, I'm going to say her name, not last name, but um, Tiffany, who has multiple children by multiple fathers, um, who is also disabled with what I have, and inflicted this disability on five children. Mm. This little hoe called me, sorry, but that's what it is. Uh, called me, called on me, said I was making all this money. Oh my God, thousands and thousands of dollars. So this was in, I was in Pennsylvania. You know, Pennsylvania is so damn backwards, okay? They didn't contact me to let me know any of this. It was, boom, you're cut off. Didn't bother to look at any of my transactions, no bank, no nothing. They And when I went up there, this cow um, social worker, whatever, I took my mom with me, and my mom was livid, I mean, she was shaking livid, and she was like, well, who was this that called, and I was like, looking at her like, yeah, good job, ma, you know, and she said, her mother, and she goes, excuse me, lady, I am her mother, if you would like, you can look it up, okay, and she's like, well, this person, and she is like, you take this and you fix it right effing now, okay? I was like, whoa, mama, you know? And, um, you know, when someone hurts you like this and you don't know who did it for years and years and years, when you find out who did it, it's absolutely pointless for any type of revenge, which I'm not a vengeful person. But, but, but this ruined my life for about five years. Um, I had no insurance. I had nothing. I was on medication. Um, I had bills to pay that I couldn't pay. Why? They cut me off. And I just moved back to Ohio. Which reminds you, which reminds me, Tiffany is also from Ohio. Mm -hmm. I know exactly where she's living, but that's not the point. I would never do anything to her because supposedly she was threatened by this evil guy, Kurt, who's no longer with us. And so it's like, this has been like 14 or 13 years ago. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's so pointless to do anything. And, um, Oh, how bad she felt. No, you didn't feel bad. Because if you felt bad, you wouldn't have done it. 
and you could have taken that man's threat, and you could have took it to the police, which, mind you, back then, when somebody threatened you of the internet, they didn't do nothing, because I was threatened repeatedly. Why don't you die? Kill yourself. Go for it. Kill yourself. Jump off a freaking bridge. You know, push your chair down a flight of steps. End it. Nobody likes you. And uh, you guys, I was in my 30s. Okay? This was all the time. Daily. Daily. Um, they basically broke up my ex and I. That... At that point, I was having a great relationship. Okay, I messed up. I messed up a few things. But it wasn't so devastating. But this man, he destroyed it. Everything that we worked for, for the seven years that we were together. Um, why? How? I know why now. Okay, I know now. Okay, but devastating. It's devastating, you guys. That's why I am so against bullying. I mean, I don't give a shit what you think about what I look like. Okay? Because this is how I was born. This is how God wants me to be. And you know what? I don't think he's too disappointed in his creation. Or any creation, for that matter. Um, when... I saw this thing today about this girl. She was 14. And this school was so nasty to her. She ended up committing suicide. Because she this was a graduation that she was forbidden, for absolutely no reason, um, to go to. And this is a la -dee da private school. And I used to think, oh man, you know, I wish I could have went to a private school. I bet I wouldn't have got the crap that I got. <laughs> Obviously not. And this brought up the whole can of worms of before I moved back here. Um, when I met Matt, I realized that the, I had faith in humanity because he was kind to me. He was loving. He he was you know he understood because he was bullied, and um, we're both geeks. And hello, look at me. I'm a little different. Um, I couldn't make any friends because this dude was on my trail, and I remember, <laughs> this is how bad it got, you guys, I wrote on a public forum that was just for OI people, go to hell, you demon, you belong there. Okay, I remembered that after he died, okay, and I was like, oh shit, you know what I mean, and I wrote it really big letters, you know, let you know I'm screaming. Um, all I can say is I hope, because I am not the only person that he has done things like this to, was not. The only thing I can hope for is God understood that this man was sick. He had to have been just sick. Um, and I'm feeling a presence around me right now, but that's beside the point. I'm alive, and I'm thankful to be alive. I am glad that I have overcame the evil, because that was totally evil. Um, I have overcome, I feel pity for this woman. I feel a lot of pity for her. Number one, she screwed everything that moved, because, you know, a lot of people with disabilities, I'm not saying all of us, because I never did, will screw around just because that makes them feel like a woman. Otherwise, they don't feel like a part of... The, what do you want to put? The love food chain, okay? And I can understand. I totally get that. You know, I would go out with guys and they say, you know, I've never been with a woman in a wheelchair or a woman with a disability. I'm like, and you're not going to. If you want to be with me because of a fetish of yours, get the hell out, okay? Just get out. And that happened quite a bit. Um, I'm like, you are disgusting. You know, first of all, I personally don't think I would do me, you know, but that's beside the point. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I had a relationship with two disabled guys, and 
It was a disaster. They had so many emotional, mental issues that I couldn't take it. I couldn't take it. And so I just want to say, you know, you can forgive those who've screwed your life up, but you can't forget. You absolutely cannot forget. I can't forget. Um, and I half-heartedly forgive, and that's not good. Because God does not want me to be this way, okay? To hold this grudge for how many years has it been? Thirteen? Mm. But it was weird. When I found out he had passed, I felt like I was on fire. Literally felt on fire. And I was like, oh my God. So I got off the computer. I was talking to this girl. And I just sat here. And literally felt like I was on fire. And I started talking to God. And I said, look, man, <laughs> I'm really sorry about doing, saying what I said to him. Okay? And it was like, but you didn't do it. No, I didn't. It was the weirdest conversation I ever had with God ever, ever. And I wanted to share this with you because there are evil people in this world. And they will, how do I want to put this, they have to own up to their consequences, I guess you say. Um, I hope he's not in hell. I really don't. Because nobody should go to hell. And especially if they were mentally ill, which I believe you've got to be mentally ill if you're doing stuff like this to people. Um, So, you know, I did pray for his soul because it was so horrendous. Not only what he did to me, but what he did to others as well. Um, his ex-girlfriend, he also burnt pretty good. Still likes to make fun of me. And like, oh, have you screwed around on your, your husband? I was like, oh my God, you little bitch. <laughs> But I didn't say a word. I just shut off the computer and threw a tantrum alone because nobody needs to see this, okay? Like just screaming and yelling at nothing that was there. But it was like I'm playing this out in my head. And I am um, like just those thoughts came back. All of the thoughts came back and back to the freaking even the suicidal thoughts which is uncool, okay, because I would never commit suicide. I know I wouldn't. And, but that's when I realized there's something evil amongst all, all of this. Because I was like, I'll never escape it. I just want to die. I'm never going to escape this. So, I understand what kids go through as a child, as an adult. I had to deal with this constantly constant repercussions just for being born you know what I mean um, but you know I went and trade it for the world and I'll tell you why because it made me a strong person I survived it I did what I felt was best for me I checked in for three days I got tons of shit from that uh, group of people Tons of it. And I'm like, yeah, but you know what, bitch? I am still here, and I am not taking your shit. The next thing you say to me, I'm calling the cops, because this is bullshit. No one, no one should be pushed to the extreme that I was pushed to. And I did not have a good relationship with God at that time, either. It was like, yeah, okay, there's a creator, there's a God, whatever, and he doesn't like me. And I really felt like he didn't love me anymore for some reason. Um, why would all these things happen? Why, why was I felt abandoned? I felt so abandoned by God and everything like that. Well, when I started going, that's why the things I didn't want to go back to church. I'm like, look, you know, I think God hates me, you know, blah, blah, blah. Why would all this happen? And now... I realize that it was one of those things where he did intervene and said, 
go to the hospital now. It's not going to be easy. It's going to get rough, but you got to do it. And I did. And it's the best thing I ever did. I proved to myself I could live on my own. I didn't need anybody. I was worth something. I could make something of my life. And I got a lot of shit when I came out, like I said. And it's like, well, you know what? I had all these sharp little objects lined up thinking, hmm, which one am I going to cut myself with? Yeah, that's, that's how bad it was. Um, I was on tons of medications for depression, anxiety, blah, blah, blah. And I knew I was an addict. And I didn't want to be an addict. Not at all. So, God intervened again. And I got off of it. All of it. I take one pill from that whole stint of drugs. Drug, drug use. And let's face it, that's all it was. It was drugs. It was legal drug dealers handing them out like M&M's. Um, the only thing I take is Wellbutrin, and that's an anti-anxiety medication, um, and it works like a charm. I don't have um, anxiety attacks that I thought were going to kill me eventually. And, um, life is so worth living, it is so worth living, and I wanted to tell this story for a long time, so I did, and so there you have it, and I am 50 years old, and I am so proud of myself, of my family, of my friends, and their support, and for God basically reeling me back in, and saying, all right, You've had enough. I'm, I'm, we need to get together here. You know, and um, I know that when my time comes, I believe that I'll be in a good place. At least I pray so. And please pray for me. <laughs> okay, I love you guys. Peace be with you, and share this if you want. Okay, I'm, usually I say don't share this, but share this if you want. Okay, I love y'all. Peace be with you. God bless, and do something good for somebody who might be suffering. Bye-bye.